Hey guys, how are you? Good to see a couple of you waiting already. Hey. And you got the messy side tonight. There's a reason for this. So I keep telling you guys how you're like, oh, it looks so clean. I'm like, you haven't seen that side. Well, that's actually clean for that side. So sorry you have to look at that. Um, I'm messing with trying to figure out the best way to put you guys and each time and I keep saying this on how many I've done and I think we're getting there and it's just going to be a matter of I think you guys are going to get moved often because I don't think I'm ever going to be able to place you completely in one spot and not move you so it's unfortunately probably going to be the way it is but oh and I am seeing something I don't like that. Okay, there. So, anyway. Little things I catch. And I'm not going to call it out. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, April. Hey, Nina, Maria, Shamira. Not so broke nurse. What is your name? I don't know that I've ever known your name. So how is everybody tonight? It's Sunday night again. How does this happen? Wasn't it just Friday? I don't know how that happens. So this is crazy. I'm trying to, I'm looking at my computer here to see what you guys are saying. Corinne, okay, that'll be easy to remember. I used to work with a Corinne and it's just a name, I'll, it'll just stick with me. So I'm trying to figure out how to, um, and I know we all have this. Computer's here. Camera's there. <laughs> so. Let's see how many more people come join us. We've got nine so far. Anybody so far sewing with me tonight? I didn't give you guys a picture. I didn't get around to uh, getting it done until probably about two hours ago. I think I got my sample done. Um, I was spending yesterday bound to determine I was going to get my tax return done. I had just, I'd started it right three weeks ago and I got about halfway through and then, you know, you always run into everything that you've got to still go find or you've got to calculate because you were lazy all year long. So I was, I was at that point. I was like, okay, I'm not going to let it drag out this year. And every year I say that and every year it happens. And this year it actually drag out longer than usual. I usually don't let it go till the end of March every now and then. But it did. And I got done last night and I was just like, oh, I'm done. And then we had to plan. Um, Gabby and Amber and I got together yesterday, late yesterday after I got done, and we planned the next two months worth of sew alongs. So we got some more good stuff coming up for you guys. Hey, Angelina. Okay, cool. Awesome. Hey, Char. Good to see you. Yeah, if anybody's sewing along, let me know. And I only ask because I kind of want to, if you're doing it with me, I want to make sure, hey, Sarah, I want to make sure that I'm aware so I don't like speed ahead and I keep pace with you. So, oh, I know, Char, it's been a while. I'm so glad you could catch this one. How is everybody? I know it's Sunday night and it's been... It's been a good weekend. The weather has been gorgeous here. Uh, yesterday was kind of gloomy, a little overcast, but um, the temperature, I can't complain. It's been so wonderful and it could be super hot by now and it hasn't been, it's been absolutely beautiful. Char, my gosh, your um, kids, and those scrunchies, I know you're doing a lot of it for them, but your kids and that scr those scrunchies, it's so fun to watch. Oh, my gosh, I'm so happy for them. They've got to just be having a blast and making some really good memories. Oh, wow. And you guys are doing so well. That's so exciting. I'm glad you got them started. You know, that's, that's, when, they, that's when the fever starts. And they can have a whole life change because of it further on down the road. I'm so proud of you for doing that with them. That is so cool. 
Oh, they are so cute. They are so cute. They're welcome. Are they watching? Tell me what their names are again. I've forgotten. I've watched how many times. I'm so bad with names. So, so bad with names. <laughs> and your little guy. Oh, he's, he's so cute. He gets into it. Oh, I love watching him. Oh, Bear Bear, you're moving around and you're starting to chirp already. You guys won't hear him chirp. Oh, that's so sweet of them. Jada and Yamani, hi. You guys are doing amazing helping your mom, but you know what? This is also yours too. So I'm so proud of you. You guys just keep right on going. And this is so cool. You guys are going to just sit back when you're older and just be really happy about everything you're doing. Nasir and Akeem, I know you're helping too. I've seen you guys on the videos and your mom just loves you guys so much. So this is so fun to watch you guys. You just keep going, okay? I'm watching your TikToks. I'm watching your videos. I'm watching everything. Hi. Hi, Jada. <laughs> hey, Anna. Yeah, I, okay, so I told the ones that were here earlier, I'm sorry, you're seeing when I, I you guys are always saying, oh, it's so nice looking, you're, so yeah, I'm like, yeah, and you're not looking over there, well, now, tonight, you're seeing over there, and it's just, <laughs> this is, this is the fiber side, and you cannot keep the fiber side organized, it just is, <laughs> hi, Nasser. <laughs> Um, you cannot, this, this is actually organized and it's crazy. Oh, <laughs> Bear Bear's in the sink. He's been hanging out in the sink lately. I don't know. All of a sudden, just this last week, I come down and I'm like, this is new. <laughs> what are you doing in the sink, buddy? And it's not even hot out yet. I can understand if it was hot and it really doesn't get that terribly hot down here because I'm below my house. Um, it's still open but uh, the house keeps it pretty well insulated. It does get hot when like, when it's June, July, August, you know, it's hot everywhere in Texas at that point, but it's still not as bad as it could be. But yeah, he's so funny. <laughs> hey buddy, I don't know what you're doing over there, but don't do that. He thinks he has to get into stuff. He's so silly. So silly. So I'm starting to get a few more people on. If anybody is doing this, hey Shirley. Yeah, you're in Arlington. Okay, cool. You're up the road. You're about four and a half hours from me. So I'm south of you. Oh, thank you, Joanna. Glad you could join us. Oh, we have so much fun. Everybody comes. We hang out. We just sew a little bit. We talk. We just, yeah, it, we have such a good time. I think you're going to enjoy it. And there's a whole bunch of us on here, too, that have... Um, that have YouTube channels as well. Um, I am not, Angelina. I'm about two-ish, two and a half hours from Gabby. So uh, Gabby and Cindy and I are in Texas, and it's kind of like a triangle. So well, that's more like a square. But anyway, so Cindy's here. Gabby's here and I'm here. So it's, we're close, but we're not. It's, it's hard. So yes, Anna, hit that like button, guys, please. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Hey, Ediani, glad you could join us. Hey, are you back down here? She's also in Texas, Ediani is. And she's kind of in that triangle. She's kind of halfway, literally about like right in the middle of all three of us. So. But um, yeah, you guys had some nasty weather traveling back yesterday. Yesterday, Annie, I'm glad that you. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you made it back. Okay. She was running from a tornado, and I used to live in Tornado Alley, and I used to do that all the time. So when they were uh, sharing their, they have their own Discord channel, and so when they were sharing their travels back, they were sharing all the the maps and everything, and uh, it's. It's, it was bad. 
Yeah, I miss you, Ediani. I miss all you guys. And I was lurking, Ediani. I was lurking bad. I'm sorry. But when you guys post, I'm watching. I just sometimes don't have time to jump into the conversations. But yeah, that's all right, Edie. Hey, you just smashed the like button. Yay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I know. No more mitten, girl, Mary. She's gone. Three tornadoes, Eddie, Eddie, I know. Isn't it fun, though, in a way, to kind of drive through all that? Because those storms are so beautiful. I mean, people are like, what? And I'm like, oh, they're gorgeous. They are powerful. They are just, the skies are so beautiful. And it's just, it's, it's a rush. It really is kind of a rush. So, yeah. Hmm. Oh, good, Sarah. You made bummies and leggings today. Awesome. I'm glad you could uh, do that. I, I, those, they're so addicting. I'm just telling you. You got it. The first one or two, you know, you're like, oh, this is good. And then when all of a sudden you make a couple more and they're so easy, you're just like, I'm sewing all the things. And, and you know, <laughs> all the fabric comes down. So, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure you were ready, honey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if anybody is sewing along, just let me know. Post in comments. I'm sewing along. I don't think I usually do have anybody, but I don't want to leave you out. I think Ediani sewed with me once because um, I want to pace myself if you are sewing. Okay. So that that is uh, just the one thing I kind of I kind of want to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, are you back for good, Ediani? I kind of saw rumblings that you might be moving. So I don't know. Like, I kind of miss parts of that conversation. Yeah, Mary, now you don't have to do this one in knit, okay? This one can be done in woven cotton as well. You can do either one. I'm using cotton tonight, Sarah, but you can use either knit or cotton, whatever you've got. I thought I'd shake it up a little bit and give you guys a little something because I know Ediani was hoping that there'd be some more cotton stuff, and I agreed with her. I think it was time to uh, start showing you guys that you can do both. Oh, okay, so that you might be over by Gabby. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, I thought I saw that, and that's why I was like, hmm. Okay, that's okay, April. Yes, Coulter's cotton works, Mary. Yes, any kind of 100% cotton or cotton poly uh, works really well, too. Um, Edie, tonight I'm shaking it up, too. I'm going to go back to a sewing machine. Now, parts of this can be done on a serger, and I will tell you those parts that you can so if you want to do both, you can, but I'm going to show you guys, I always tell you I'm doing it on my surgery, but you can do it on your sewing machine. I'm going to flip it up and do it the other way and show you guys how to do it on the sewing machine if you're not real sure. Oh, yes, Joanna. I, the, I, you know, I miss those strong thunderstorms from home. That is, we don't get them like that down here. And the sound and the feel of those things, I miss them. Yes, Angelina, you have to move to Texas. You have to. <laughs> Come on down, girl. <laughs> hey, Pia. All right, so I did post a sample. So I'll show you guys what we are making. All right, so this is... This is the little bubble romper and it's gathered at the neck. It's just, it'll gather when they put it on. It's kind of hard to do that the way I did the tie because the tie moves freely. So it'll, it'll do what it needs to do. If the kid's a little bit wider, it'll do that, you know? So thanks Angela. And so it's got the little, the little ruffles down here. Now, this is the part that you guys, I'm going to challenge you tonight, okay? You can do this. 
it just may take a little bit of time, okay? So I know you guys can do this, but it's got the stretch legs. So that's made with, that's made with elastic only. Say it's got, there's no casing. It's just the elastic. And then we've got the snap bottom. So we're back to doing the snaps again too, okay? So that's what we're making. The pattern pictures, when I sent you guys over to the website, if you looked at the tutorial, that I'm sorry, that tutorial wasn't the best. They had there's a girl that was commenting in the comments about how great the tutorial was, and I was like, hmm, I don't like to be negative, but I have to disagree. I thought that was a really bad tutorial for a beginner to follow because there were some things that she didn't explain. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> So anyway, hey, Sandy. Hey, hey, hey. Glad you could join. So Sandy, this is what we're doing. Here's the little bubble romper. And knit or cotton, woven cotton or cotton poly, whatever you guys have. So yes. Oh, it's perfect for like the beach, the hot days. Yes. Now, I know the pattern was only a three to six month. I know that. Okay. I'm going to show you what you do to take it up a little bit if you need it in a bigger size, okay? So if this one's a super, super easy one to adjust. So I wasn't too worried. I don't normally like to choose a pattern that's only one size, but once in a while when it's a tutorial just showing you guys how to do things, I have to if it's free and it's a good pattern and I can do it for free because I don't like to choose patterns you guys have to buy if I can help it. Now, if I have to, if I have to do one that you buy, there's a reason because I'm not finding a free one that I think is good. So, and then if I do have you buying one, it's one that you guys will love to use for your shops if you want to, or just to make gifts for people or whatever. So it will be fairly good for you guys to follow and reuse. So we're gonna learn a couple of things tonight. You're gonna learn how to make one of these ties so the tie is like this and i'm going to show you how to do that again going to stretch you a little it's not hard it's fiddly okay so it's a motor skill that you're going to have to learn and you will be a little frustrated it'll take a little bit of time the first couple of times you do it okay so just be patient with yourself all right and once you learn this technique, these ties will become nothing, okay? And then the other technique you guys are gonna learn is how to do a gathered elastic leg without doing a casing. And all we're doing is putting the elastic in there, okay? Gonna be a little similar, stretching you here with the thought process too a little similar to how we put the waistband on with the bummies where you kind of had to stretch it and sew, okay? It's gonna be similar to that thought. So I'm gonna show you some things because there will be one part that is gonna be very, very important. You do exactly as I tell you, or you're gonna fight your sewing machine, okay? And once you get it going, then you're good. It's just getting it going. Sarah, yeah, Piccolini Piccolini is Pia. Yep, you are right. Hey, Mina. Hey, Mary Beth, I hope you like that t-shirt pattern. I thought that was really an easy one and very universal. You know, you can change that up. You can put um, a pocket on it too. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can make it a rounded bottom instead of a straight bottom. So it's just a matter of, cutting it and the way you would do that is you take the pattern lay it down on your fabric and then maybe get like a round plate or something to trace around and then that'll give you a rounded bottom so there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with those simple simple patterns okay so if anybody else is going to nobody said anything they're sewing along so we're just going to go okay tonight's is going to be made out of the cherries and um, Angelina uh, Amber had made some leggings 
Uh, so if that's what you're looking for, we've got that. Um, I'm trying to think if I did anything. We have some boy shorts coming up on one of the next sew alongs. Amber's doing that one. So we plan the sew alongs for the next two months. Um, I was going to bring that down to that list and I totally forgot. I've got boy swim shorts. I'm doing more into May as we get a little closer to Memorial weekend. So I'll be doing boy swim shorts. She's doing boy shorts, which you could possibly, I don't know what pattern she's using. Uh, you could possibly take the boys shorts that she's making and just make them longer. Um, the boys swim shorts I'm going to be making, possibly you can do the same thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, um, we're trying to get either more unisex things or things that are truly boys or truly girls. But we're trying to not just weigh into one side or the other. Plus, we're also going to start um, adding in some uh, room decor stuff. Like I have a, an animal pillow that we're going to make in the next couple of months. So it'll be like the shape of an animal all stuffed up. You can put either on their bed or in, in a nursery or let them play with or something. A vest. We could do a vest. That's a good idea, Eddie. Let me write that down. Because we were struggling trying to think of stuff. And, yeah, I, I know we talked about the vest and I forgot about it. So thank you for reminding me. Vest um yeah and then if you i'm gonna write boy pants too because that'd be probably something as we go into fall we could do the pants for sure the vest we could probably hit because we're through may through the end of may we're planned out so the june july we could probably get the vest. that would be good because that'll be you know summer wedding that kind of stuff going into the fall that would be really good Made My Me patterns are very good, Angela. Very, very good. I've got a couple of those, and she's very talented. Bottom button-up shirts. I think, did we? I wonder if she's got one of those. We talked about that. Okay. The button-up shirt. Okay, so let me give you guys a little background on how we're trying to do these. That one might be it down the road just a little bit. Um, what we're trying to do is start you guys, when we first started doing this, start at the very basic beginning with somebody who knew nothing. And then work our way and build and build and keep teaching you skills and teaching you skills and build on those skills and build on those skills. The button down shirts, I'm going to say skill wise, we might be more in the fall ish at that point. Um, it's not tough. Um, yeah, but I think it's maybe a little further than I think we're ready to be at yet. So we will get there. We will get there because it involves not just a button down placket and putting on buttonholes and stuff. It's also putting on that collar. And those are the two skills that are not hard, but they are a little more advanced. So that's the only thing I want to build to that. Oh, yes, I've seen that, Pia. And buttonholes, I think um, a lot of people, if you've got the machine for them, they're super easy, but yet I've got the machine for them and I can still scroll them up. And it's more just, um, I'm not either replacing them in the right spot or I'm not careful enough and really I get in a hurry. Hey, Natasha. Yes, good explanation there, Sandy. Yep, that's exactly what Discord is. Yeah, it's um that's where all of us met, Edie. And we've kind of come off of there. 
some of us and I don't have as much time to spend on there. And there's other girls that get on and they have quite the community and they've got a support system there and a chat system and they keep track of each other. It's really cool. I, I'm a lurker. I'm a lurker and I admit it because I just don't have the time. But, you know, you guys, I'm lurking on Ediani's channel a lot, too. And so, you know, if you just know most of the time I'm sitting there watching and reading. So I know I know what you guys are talking about. I just can't get on and say anything. I just I'm crazy busy. I don't like it when I'm this busy. Buttonholes, Mary, are not hard. But there is a... Um, a way to do them without having um, an actual buttonhole attachment to your machine. That That's tough, but you can do it. As long as you've got a zigzag on your machine, you can do buttonholes. It's just an older way to do it. I know, I gotta jump, I've gotta jump on there someday, Sandy. I watch you guys. And you make me laugh some days. I just sit here, I'm in the background just laughing at you because you're, you're so silly. I love it. I love it. It makes my day. Yes, um, Edie, there are three of them that I'm on. I don't know if there's more. But um, go ahead if you want to post yours, Ediani. And then that way they can have them. And then Nita's got one. And... So, yeah, hey, Julie. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, Edie. Okay, well, let's get going here, guys. Okay, so I said we're gonna do all of this completely on the sewing machine, okay, instead of the serger. But I'm gonna tell you guys how to do this if you have a serger and a sewing machine. You're gonna need both if you have a serger. You can't do it 100% on the serger either, okay? So, yeah. So if you've got them cut out, you're gonna need two. And let me show you how this pattern looks. Because if you're not familiar, just follow exactly what it says. So you have three pieces, one, two, and three. And it says attach B and attach B. So make sure you attach B to B and then C to C. Just trust what it says because then it'll end up looking like this. Now, mine, my printer, or this is a hand-drawn pattern, and so that might have been the thing. It didn't 100% match up. It was just a skosh off. Just realize this is going to be all the way straight. So that, that's kind of where it just didn't completely match up. So just make sure that's completely straight. This goes on the fold. Okay. So this is your pattern piece. Now I was telling you that this is a three to six month. And if we want to take these up into bigger sizes, then what you need to do is, and, and I'm not going to have you adjust it a whole lot because when you start getting into adjusting, you know, four and five sizes higher, things change. So you can adjust about two sizes and then your grading of your pattern possibly can change. Okay. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go any further than that, but the difference in sizes a lot of times can be about a quarter to three eighths of an inch when you're dealing with little kids patterns. So what I would do, if you want to take this to a six to 12 month, is I would add over here, I would add probably three eighths of an inch because these are gonna be wide and you want them kind of balloony anyway. So three eighths to a half an inch because if you're going from six to 12, that's really two sizes, so six, nine, 12. So I'd probably go about a half an inch. So you measure over half an inch and you draw the half an inch over here and then extend and you want to drop you want to drop this point right here down probably about a quarter of an inch and then you'll take your curve from here 
to that. So you're going to come down and then you're going to just bring it down just a little bit. So you're creating a little bit bigger armhole because they're getting a little bit bigger through here. Okay. And then I would do where these two attach, I'd add a half an inch there too. So drop this piece down about a half an inch. So you're adding a half an inch in the length. All right. So that would get you to a 12. And if you're going to do 12 to 18, do the same thing again. Another half an inch. Only this time I'd probably drop this one more than half. I'd probably go about three quarters to an inch. You guys are going to start getting longer here. Okay. So remember, you're still going to drop this armhole down just a little bit more again. So, and then if you go the 18 to 24, if you want to do that again, another probably three eighths of an inch out and probably about a quarter of an inch at that point. So the difference in the length, I would probably do at the 12 to 18, the little extra healthy, because at that point they're starting to move around a little more and they're going to start getting longer. So they're, they're not going, you know, how they kind of go from potato to tree to potato to tree. So Anyway, so that's kind of just a rough because this is since this is so big, it doesn't have to be super exact on the grading. And then I wouldn't go any higher than that. I would stop at that point. And then if you want higher than that, I would actually buy a pattern that is graded that will do stuff like this. So yeah, at that point, 24 months, they're they're getting they're getting worth a walk in and everything's changing. So I don't I don't like to start fudging past that. So anyway, that's just the information on that. Now, um, the arm banding, which is this point, this pink fabric here, you're going to cut a piece the so you got your fabric and you fold it in half, right? Let me just grab some fabric here. I just grabbed something off the shelf, so bear with me. It may not be a good example. Okay, it's good enough. So you've got your fabric folded in half, okay? So folded in half means you've got this white edge or the salvage edge is up on one side and then the fold is at the other. So if you were to unfold it, it would probably be about 44, 45 inches wide if you're using woven. If you're using knit, it can possibly go up to 58 inches wide, okay? So you've got that, right? So you're going to take, when it's like this, fold it in half, lay it down, and you're going to cut one strip, the width of that fabric, so from the fold to the salvage, double width, double double fabric, okay? You're gonna cut one piece that's an inch and a half wide, straight up, so it ends up like this. It's an inch and a half wide, so here's my fold on my fabric, okay? And then you're going to cut another one that's two inches wide. So you'll have two of them, okay? The second one that's two inches wide is the one that we're going to use for the tie. And when we're done, it becomes that wide, okay? Okay, just making sure I didn't miss anything. So those are the measurements you need for that. Um, for the six to nine month, the elastic I cut two pieces at nine inches. Okay. Now, as you go up in size, if you're making this for your child, then just kind of measure their thighs. And I would add probably about an inch or so to them, or if you want to really lose, add more, it's fine. Um, this one turned out to, it looks like, you know, it's gonna, the baby's thighs are gonna fit. That it's probably gonna be right at their, right at their thighs. 
So, you know, and they'll stretch. Hey, Nara. So depending upon how loose you want them now, if you cut them bigger, it's not going to have as much of a frill to it or a ruffle to it. So just realize that, okay? All right. Hey, Zoa. I'm glad you could join us. Yay. Haven't seen you in a while, girl. I hope you're doing okay. So, all right. And then the last thing that you need. Now, this is where you go diving into your, and I hope you're hanging on to this stuff, your leftover stabilizer, your little bits and bobs of your stabilizer. And your cutaway stabilizer is perfect for this. Don't use tearaway. Use your cutaway. So three quarters of an inch wide by, because I told you about a four by six inch. I was just kind of guessing because I hadn't made my sample yet. And I knew you didn't need much. And this is actually too long. So um, I'm, I'm notorious for trimming stuff. I, I just kind of do it and trim it to make it fit. So if you cut your six inch piece three quarters of an inch wide get two pieces of that that's going to be more than enough you're probably going to end up using about a little over half to two-thirds of it depending upon um yeah how long if, you've, if it's longer it's longer but, you know you just you're going to cut it down and cut it to how it fits and i'll show you what i'm talking about when we get there okay so and then you've got your snaps so we're going to have three snaps in the bottom and we've already kind of go gone over how we've done those in the past so we're going to redo those again okay so you notice we're building and building and building all right okay so we're here i'm going to go over and i'm going to move my camera and take you guys over there and take my computer with me so we're going to be over at i hope this works <laughs> oh, maybe not I forgot it was plugged in. Oh, I wonder. Maybe I'll do this or not. Sorry for the close. And then you guys won't have to stare at my crazy, crazy dirty studio on that other side. Okay, this might work. This might work. All right. So if anybody gets motion sick, I'm moving you now. All right. Don't look. All righty. So you'll be able to kind of see what I'm doing right here. Now, this is... Um, I'm showing you on my other girl tonight. I usually use my Janome and I wanted to bring you over and show you my brother because my brother is also a sewing embroidery combo and I kind of like to shake it up and use them both. And every time I use one, I'm like, oh, why did I quit using that one? I love using that one. And then when I go use the other one, I'm like, oh, but I love this one too. Well, I sewed on this one, man, sorry, it's really dusty, I need to dust it. Um, I sewed on this one earlier with the sample, and I was like, oh, yeah, we're, we're using this one tonight. I kind of miss this one, so thank you, Angelina. So anyway, I can get it to wake up here. All right, so I'm going to show you guys real quick, and i got to move this again. Sorry, I'm going to move this light. The... Uh, the stitch for if you um, don't have a serger and you want to use your machine, okay? I'm going to show you that one. And sorry, I'm going to move you one more time. Actually, maybe I'll just move the, the camera. What am I thinking? Let me just take the camera off. Let me go ahead and get you guys back. Okay, so this right there is the stitch we're going to use in place of a serger. So if you guys have that stitch, you're good. So I know we've always been saying you can do it. If not, if all you have is a straight and a zigzag, then use your zigzag, okay? So with this one, 
if you're using your cotton fabric, you really need to um, finish your edges. And you can do this after you do the side seams or before. I'm gonna do it this time before because it's just easier to do these leg areas, okay? The leg areas are a little tricky when you've um, already sewn everything together. Okay. And I like to set my um, stitch at a little bit wider. My defaults to a two and a half on the length. And so I like this one to be at about a three when I do this. So here we go. I'm just going to real quick like do this. And then make sure you pull back and get that out of there because it's going to bunch up just a little bit when it first gets going. And sometimes it's hard to get it started. So what I will do is I will grab my seam ripper and use that to kind of help push things through. You can use anything kind of flat, but it also kind of helps. Just make sure you don't hit it with your, your needle until you can get it out the back just a little bit because this does a little bit of a circular motion. And so it wants to kind of grab that edge back there until you can get moving out of there. And it doesn't have to be a perfect, beautiful seam. It just has to keep it from fraying. That's all that matters. So don't worry about it looking really beautiful. Sometimes I do this so fast, it ends up not looking beautiful at all. So I'm just saying. It doesn't matter. So you can do that one or you can do a zigzag. It just depends upon, you know, what you prefer. So yeah, I just did this one real fast and it's kind of stretchy and it's a mess. It's a total mess, but it's okay. So you can kind of see how it Kind of mimics a serger. Now, if I would pull that together and go a little slower, it would probably look about a million times better, but I'm just doing this real fast. I'm using cotton, Julie. Uh, you can use either cotton or knit, your choice. Okay, I'm going to do a zigzag on this one and show you guys what that looks like. I did it a smaller, don't start the barking thing. There's nothing to bark at. Dog's down here. <laughs> so I did this kind of a skinnier one, but you can do a wider if you want. No, no, we're not doing the barking thing. No, no, she's such a quiet dog most of the time until I need her to be quiet. And then all of a sudden she's like, no, oh, now I want to be vocal. And I'm like, why now? Because there's nothing triggering this at all. So she's so funny. Okay, so I thought that was just a little bit skinnier. So I'm going to go ahead and take that up to about a five. I think I had it at three and a half.
And you guys are noticing that my sewing machine, I don't have to switch this bed. I can, but I can leave the embroidery unit on and it just saves me time. So when I take it over into the normal sewing section, it pulls that automatically all the way out of the way for me. So it's kind of a nice little, nice little thing that I don't have to switch that out. Okay, so we're going to do now the bottom part. So I've done the legs and now I'm doing the bottom part. Okay, so we've got the bottom part here. I'm going to do the top. You don't have to do the armhole part because we're going to finish that off. over here and do this one and we're not I'm not going to do the sides yet either but I'll show you why after you guys have made a couple of outfits it'll start making sense as to why I finish certain pieces ahead of time and why I don't So we've got them finished off. Now, we're gonna sew the side seams together. So we're putting it together, matching underneath the armhole and the bottom, okay? Now you can pin, and if you're not used to sewing with this, you pin, you pin a couple of them. I'm not going to do that because I've messed with enough and I can hang on to it and you'll get there eventually. But until you guys get super comfortable, pin, save yourself a headache of having to rip it out. Okay. All right. And don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and end. And we're taking about a three eighths of an inch seam. So I'm setting the edge of my foot on the edge, the cut edge of the seam here. Okay, so that's going to be my guide all the way down for the three eighths. Now you can sew forward, back forward, or you can do it this way too. I'm in just a little bit further, I'm in about two or three stitches, and I'm going to go ahead and back up and then go forward. this end back up same thing on the other side okay what's going on you being a busy girl hey Marissa Welcome to our sew along. So now we've sewn that. Now 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go finish these seams together. Okay, so that's why I didn't finish them first. I want to zigzag or whatever edge stitch you're going to use. I want to zigzag and hold them together. Okay. Oh, Shana, I'm envious. I love Sunday naps. Those are the best. I did not get one today. Now you can see it's finished. So we've got the seam, the straight seam, and then you've got your zigzag. So you're mimicking what the serger does by doing that. Finished those off, okay? Now, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to run over real quick, and I want to just give this a quick press. So I'm going to press this down, the seam. And this is the one thing when you're working with stuff like this, Pressing is everything, guys. Take your two seconds and go and press your seam, okay? It makes everything just lay so much nicer while you're trying to sew. Your end product is so much nicer. So can you guys chat for about two seconds? I'll be right back. All right, so you're going to see I've got this little, when I pressed it, I've got this little end of the seam. Normally, you don't have to do this, but on this pattern, I'm going to snip that off, and you'll see why here in about two seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut it so it matches where right along that seam, okay, on both sides. All right, so I no longer have a tail there, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna turn this so I get a finished edge, and that's along the leg part, okay? Let me back up a little. So let me hold this the right way so you guys can see better. Okay, yeah. so we've got it like this, okay? We're going to turn this edge right here, right along there, to create that finished edge for your little ruffle that we're going to do when we add the elastic, okay? So I'm going to take a straight stitch, and my length sits usually between a two and a half and a three. Now, you can take this over to your iron, and you can turn about an eighth of an inch seam and iron it flat so that when you come back and you sew it's there for you okay so 
I'm not going to do that just because I'm used to doing it. And once you get used to doing it, you don't have to do that anymore. But until you're used to doing it, I recommend highly doing it, especially since this is on a curve and you won't be quite as frustrated. Okay. So again, start and stop your stitch. And always keep your needle in the down position. So you should have a button or something that you press on your sewing machine that whenever you stop, your needle will be in the down position, okay? So I'm just gonna quick like turn this edge. And you see how this is where we clipped. That's why we clipped it because it just makes it look much nicer because that little ruffled edge, there's a chance that people could see that. When you get done, then the outside has a nice finished edge. And there's your, your turned seam. Yep. So now we do it on the other side, okay? Yes, Mary, I did zigzag the edges um, on to finish them. Now, if you're doing knit, you might be doing a little more of a zigzag, but with cotton, we're going to just zigzag the edges closed if you're using a normal machine without using a serger. And then we're also going to use zigzag for putting on the elastic at the legs. So now we're going to turn this other side. And if you're not sure where your needle is landing, then just put it down when you first start. Sometimes I can never tell, and so I have to do that, and I'll miss it by like just a tiny bit. And so I'm like, oh, I'm glad I checked. I thought I was right on there, and I wasn't. So this is just a little tiny hem. to the seam there and it gets a little bulky so just take your time that's where you can get a little frustrated and possibly break a needle if you get a little too excited and you're going too fast so silly amber okay so yes straight stitch your edges together mary let me show you again okay so i straight stitch the edges here on both sides to take it together and then i zigzagged them close to finish i finished all the other edges first before i took these side seams okay except for the arm area. You don't have to finish those because we're going to encase those with the um, other opposite color. And so those will be completely covered up and they won't fray. All right. Now, so we've got that the legs done. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put the binding on at the arms. Okay. 
So this is where you take the one and a half inch that you that we made. All right. And I just took one full strip. And if you want, you can cut it in half if it's too long for you to work with. I'm I'll cut it when I get done. And that's just I'm just used to doing that. Okay. So the way we're going to do this. And I know you've seen this done several ways. I'm going to show you guys an easy way. Okay. So you've got the back. And then you've got this, this part here, the front of this. You're going to put the front to the back. Okay. So it looks like that. And we're going to sew it on. And then you're going to turn it. Okay. So at first you're going to be like, what? No, wait, wait, what? That's not, that. Those, those two aren't supposed to be like that. Yeah, they are. So you've got the back of your fabric, and then you've got the front of this binding against the backs. You're looking at two backs, back and back, okay? So you start up here at the neck, and we're going to go all the way around. So you're going to start at one side, and you're going to sew it together and sew it on. Now take your time on this and you can use, just use a straight stitch and a normal seam. I'd probably do, oh, about a quarter of an inch, eighth to a quarter of an inch. Okay. There, there doesn't have to be a seam allowance on this, but you want it to have enough that it catches. All right. So I'm going to take my time on this because it has a lot of curves. And this one, you're also going to front stitch. You're going to back stitch on it. I'm sorry. This one, you especially want to make sure your needle is in the down position at all times that you stop because you're going to be fiddling with your fabric. Now, you may have to um, pin until you're used to doing this. That's okay. But even once you've pinned, you may fiddle just a little bit with it. So don't be too worried about that. That's okay. And I'm just laying this out as I go. Now, when I get to the seam, which is the bottom of the arm, so it's going to be like, you're going to be like right here, okay? I want to lay that out really nice and flat and make sure that I move this fabric so that it's more coming at me and not in a straight line. Otherwise, you're going to end up probably having more of a V instead of a curve. And then I will take this other part and kind of start straightening it out a little bit to get a straight seam. Okay. I'm going to move this and show you guys what I'm talking about. Because this is kind of a newer technique for you. Okay. So, kind of, there we go. So you can't see, see how this would normally be like this, okay? Trying to look at my camera and look at the computer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this so it's straight, okay? I'm trying to do this one handed. Pull it so it's straight. See how the, there's the seam that's under the armpit. And see how that starts lining up? and then line it up and that's how you sew a curve now I'm at the edge there I can feel it so I'm going to put you guys back because I've got to do the backwards thing Mary Beth, let me show you. Let me pull this off here and see if that helps answer your question. Okay. 
So when I started, see now I've got I've got the round part, and here's the the seam, the side seam. Here's the neck edge and the neck edge. Okay, so I started even with the neck edge, like that, and then I sewed down, and then when I got to that seam, which is right there, that's where I took it and straightened it out so that I could keep sewing straight. And then here is the edge. Now you can cut it ahead of time if you want so that it's not quite so long. Now we're gonna do it on the other side, okay? So you guys will see it twice. Yeah, let's do it one more time. Back side of the fabric, front side of the, the binding, so goes against the back side of the fabric, lines up evenly with your edge, with your neck, and with the edge of the arm, okay? Now this is the part where I'm just gonna kind of sew and move it just a little bit, but when I get to the seam is where I'm gonna straighten everything out, okay? in just a little bit further. All right, so here is my side seam right there, okay? There's my side seam. Here's my other neck, all right, right here. And so you see how it's got the curve. I'm gonna start straightening that. So I put my fingers right at where the curve is here and kind of straighten it, hold it. And this is where you just take your time, okay? Because you're going around curves. And just lining up the edges as you go. fingers if you've got it pinned then that's even better because then the pinning is going to help you hold it until you get used to doing this okay this is another one of those hand-eye coordination things you guys will get it's just very hard the very first time you do something anytime it's a hand-eye coordination thing so it'll become second nature to you and then just cut it off right even with the other neck on the other side okay so oh thanks mary all right, so when I get done, then you open it and look, there's the back side, the inside, and the front side of the binding. Now that's right, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run back over to my iron and I'm going to iron this so that it irons flat. Again, back side of the fabric iron it completely flat and then when you get done doing that on both sides you're going to flip it and you're going to take the top edge here and you're going to fold it until it meets the raw edge of those two seams and you're going to iron it like that okay i will be right back and then we'll show you that again go ahead and chat amongst yourselves girls
Okay. So now, this is now laying flat. There's the back and the front. Iron mice and fold it in half so that it ma matches right at the seam part. Okay, so here's the raw edges. Why this thing is not focusing so well. But there's the raw edges. There's your seam. And then this goes there. Okay, so now how we finish this is you fold it over so it covers that raw edge and that other seam. Okay, so I'm going to start at this neck up here and I'm going to start sewing. And you can iron this until you get used to doing it. But I'm just going to turn it and you're going to sew right along the edge there all the way down. Okay. And again, don't forget to backstitch just a little bit when you first get going. If you have any little raw, like frayed edges there, just kind of slide them in underneath. You don't have to stop and clip them or anything. And then make sure you cover if there's a little seam showing there from when you did that, make sure when you sewed it on, make sure you cover that so that that doesn't show. Just depends upon how big of a seam you took. I took a little bit bigger seam on this one than I probably should have, but it'll be fine. And then I'm just catching the edge. So take your time. Not a hurry. So we have the bound seam. I'm going to do it on the other side real quick. Again, turn it over. Make sure you cover your seam, cover your stitches right there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'm covering those stitches. They cover just barely. My, I took a little bit healthier seam than I probably should have, but it's fine. it inside out. So, so far, here's the neck and then there's the bottom. Okay, so we now have the seams bound on the top. Now, what we're going to do is back to the um, the iron and I'm going to trim these off just a little bit so that they're nice and even and we're going to just turn and iron one little part of the seam so I'm going to turn and iron probably about an eighth of an inch about like that across the top okay on the neck on both sides And I'm just trimming everything to be even. Okay. Be right back.
Okay, so now we're just going to sew that down, okay? And this is a part later on when you guys get real comfortable doing this stuff, you don't have to do this step. You can go ahead and just flip it over because we're creating the casing for the uh, tie for the neck. But until you guys get used to doing it, I want you to go ahead and sew this down. It just makes life a whole lot easier for you. But later on when you're used to doing it, you won't do that. You'll just go ahead and flip it and you'll catch this in your final scene. Hey, Evelyn. Hey, Yvmar. Good to see ya. Oh, thanks, April. I've got a little bit of a runny nose. My allergies are killing me down here. Our cedar season is starting in Texas. And even if you take allergy meds, it still does not 100% keep it away. It's better. But man, my nose just runs. And I actually got to put my contacts in today. Some days I can't even do that. All right. So we've got that part done. Now we're going to come back to finishing this up because I want to go on to doing the elastic. And while we're at this angle, I want to be able to show you guys. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to go grab the elastic and I just, I'm trimming up all my straight ends because I know I'm going to have to trim those anyways. And it's just easier if I do it now. Okay. Now, this is the part I want you guys really to pay attention to because this is the learning curve and you're going to be fine. You guys can do this. Um, you know, Angela, it really depends. I move around a lot. And so sometimes... Standing is easier for me, but there's times when it takes a lot out of me too. If I've got a lot of sewing to do, I'm going to sit, but um, I've got this set up to stand because it's set up for embroidery most of the time. But if I'm going to do a lot of sewing instead of embroidery, I'm going to sit down. But for these teachings, I kind of have to stand up and I'm moving you guys around a little bit. So... All right, so fold your elastic, your piece of elastic in half and find your middle, okay? And I usually kind of crease it just a little bit and then take your middle. And okay, so you see your side seam. So we're looking at the edge of the leg that we just turned that little seam on, okay? And we're gonna place that about a quarter of an inch up. You just wanna have a little bit of a free edge, okay? And you're going to pin that really well. And until you guys get used to doing this, I want you to put two pins in right here, one in each direction. Okay. Hey, Sierra. So I'm going one one way, one the other. And it just, I found it just holds better. Now you have to be careful that you don't stick yourself. But I found it just holds better. And this is what this is all about. This is about holding for you guys, okay? Then you're going to take this, the free edge and you're going to line it up. Same distance. Remember, you've got that about quarter of an inch space that you're leaving from the edge to your elastic. And you want to pin that. And I sometimes will take it at an angle. Come on, focus. 
Well, you guys can see what I'm saying. It's at an angle right there. And then the other side. Yeah, Mary, it's probably better for you to stand if you're, you know, going all day long. But those concrete floors of the factory, those are super hard on you. Hey, Sandy. So, yeah, that's that's not so good either. Okay, so you can kind of see how we've got a whole lot of draping going on. That's because we're going to stretch the elastic and make it work there. Now, since you guys, this is a new technique for you. I'm going to have you pin in a couple of areas, okay? So you're going to take and go again in half where your elastic is and where your half of this is, okay? So you see you got there and there. I'm going to take this and pin there, okay? So it doesn't have to be super exact. But it's just an area. And I'm going to have you pin again in two directions because you're going to have a whole lot of pulling going on on this. You can even go at an angle. You can pin three, whatever. Okay. But I want you guys to pin it real secure because we're going to pull like this. And so, okay. And it seems like it's going to be really hard. The hardest part is once we've got to get started and get enough of an edge that we can get our hands back there to hang on to it. And that way the sewing machine will, then we can help the sewing machine get going along. It's just getting the sewing machine going. And then once you've got it going, you're fine. Now see, it's not gonna be exactly perfect. You're gonna do the best you can to keep that distance, okay? So we're gonna do that again over here. Fold that in half. So you take your pinned areas and just kind of put it in half. Take your elastic, make a little bit of a, a crease in it, and then here's where this is at. And place it in there. And I apologize, some of these pins have seen their life. They're bent a little bit and I need to just throw them away. Okay, so now we've got that started, okay? So we're going to start. You're going to put your machine on a zigzag stitch. And I've got the width at about three and a half and the length at about one and a half to two. Mine goes kind of like every point to where I know if some of you have more of a dial. So get your dial somewhere between one and a half and two and you'll be okay. All right. Now we are going to tack this with our zigzag so that it is like held down. So you're going to kind of like just do a couple back and forth together to, at one time and not let the machine move. And that's kind of the same as going forward and back. Now you've got that pin in there. So the minute you put your foot feed down, I want you to take that pin out. Okay. And this tacking is going to replace that pin for you. Okay. And start with your, I like to keep my needle so that it's sunk into the elastic really well, okay? So now I'm going to let it go forward just a little bit without stretching it. And now you've got this tail back here, this thread. So it's still not to a point where I can grab the fabric. But it's at a point where if I take my time, I can get it moving until I can get the fabric. So you see how I'm stretching that. So I can move it for a second. You see how that lines up like that? Okay. So now I'm going to put you back. I wish I could keep you there. This is where I need somebody else to hold the camera. <laughs> so since I've got this pulled out, 
I'm able to hold it with my left hand and let go with my right because I'm going to keep it pulled with my left while I pull on this thread tail in the back. And you're just going to slowly take a stitch until it gets going. See how the machine has fed it and I've pulled from the back. Okay. Now we're going to, again, this is a circular kind of rounded area. So you want to go ahead and pull it straight instead of trying to go in the circle, okay? Now, I've pretty well got it started. And you see how this, the way I've got this pinned, it's holding. It's kind of at an, a V, so it's holding really good. You just have to make sure you don't draw blood when you're doing this, okay? And we just keep working our way. Take your time. You don't have to do this quick, and I'm holding that a little bit to try and keep my edge so that I can keep that distance. Now I'm coming up to these others. I'm going to stop for a second, all right? I'm going to pull out again before I remove those pins. Now if you find out that your spacing from your elastic to the side of your seam is like like right here. It's a little closer than it is back here. That's okay. When I let go of this, I'll pull this in just a little bit so it matches. But I'm going to pull this straight and and get the get it so that it's expanded enough that it's holding everything before I remove these pins. This is where that pin holder that I was showing you guys either last week or the week before comes in real handy. I just that's what I'm stuffing my pins in. Now I've got enough in the back. I can just kind of help guide it. I'm not pulling, I'm just guiding. I'm guiding the fabric through. Okay, now we're getting to where I've got to kind of adjust. It's a little bit far, it's not bad. If you don't get it, it's fine, it's not gonna matter. So we're just gonna keep moving. sure you stretch your elastic so that your fabric lays nice and flat along with your elastic laying nice and flat and then hold it with your fingers and if you're left-handed or right-handed whichever works best for you okay, I'm getting to my needles I'm going to pull those out. Okay. Now I'm in the home stretch. And it looks like I'm going to have to adjust where they end up because I've got a little bit too much there as well. It looks like. okay. So just take your time. Get everything laying nice and flat the way it's supposed to. And you can always stop and adjust if something moves again on you. And I'm not crossing over my elastic. I'm catching my elastic on each one. Okay. Oh, yes, Mary. Janomis are amazing. How is that new machine, Mary? I've been thinking about you. I love Janomis. Okay, so we're getting down to the tail here, okay? So I'm going to pull the tail and hang on to that because we've got to tack it. But I've got to keep that tension to keep that elastic going until I get to about there, and that's fine. So now I'm going to back up because that's gonna get caught in a seam. So it's fine that I lost just a little bit of it, that it didn't go all the way to the edge. And you'll see, I'll show you here. It didn't go all of the way to the edge. It's fine. This is fine because we're going to do this anyways at the bottom and then flip it so it does not matter that that did not get all the way, okay? But here's the one leg, let me cut my my thread. So there's the one. 
Now we're going to do this one more time, okay? So you guys get to see this one more time. Oh, Sandy, you would love Janome. You would totally love a Janome. Okay, so I'm going to start and I'm going to tack the first one at the end and go and tack it at the other end. Or you can fold it in half and start in the middle. It doesn't matter because I know I did it the other way. And I'll tack it at that end. All right, so now you can fold it in half and find your middle, increase it, and then stick that on the side seam and do two pins. Just keep your distance again away from the edge. As you notice, a lot of this stuff on learning how to do this stuff, guys, is taking your time to pin and iron and pin and iron. That is key to having something look very well done because you can be brand new to it. Doesn't matter if you pin and iron and pin and iron. It's going to look really good when you're done. Okay, so there's the two. We've got the two pins in. Now we're going to fold it in half again to find the middle. Crease, fold it in half again, and then take your crease. And, uh, you know, don't have to be super exact, but close enough. And then you're going to double pin there. And like I said, you can, you can move your spacing a little as you sew if you have to. It'll work out just fine. Man, these allergies are making me crazy. There's nothing worse than a constant runny nose. Hey, Leslie. Glad you could join. Miss seeing you last week. I missed uh, Cindy, too. One pin. And then another pin. Oh, that's okay, Mary. Come back when you can. That's right. It's time to video chat with your, with your hubby and the kids. That's so sweet that he does that. All right. So now we're going to tack this end again just to hold it. And we're going to put it down, pull your pin out. And then just tack it with, don't let it go forward, just kind of give it a, a little bit of a tack there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go forward a few stitches just to get some length to it. And then I'm going to pull it out and stretch the elastic and start laying everything so that it lines up nice and straight. Now be careful when you're putting your fingers down that you don't get right on top of these pins and draw blood. Again, like I said about a week or two ago, if that happens and you get blood on the garment, instantly put some of your saliva on it. It'll dissolve it and then you can go get, you can go wash it out real quick because your spit dissolves your own blood. And I know that's gross, but we need to know those things. <laughs> Okay, so real carefully, get it going. And I'm just pulling the tail end of the thread to get it going. And I'm just feeling that slip just a touch. So I'm going to stop for a minute and adjust everything. And you notice how I'm kind of holding this over the edge. I'm going to show you guys a little trick. See how I'm kind of holding that? Ugh, I'm not doing so good there. 
I've got it stretched and then I've got this pulled down over the edge. That's kind of a little trick I found works for me to help pull this because then gravity kind of helps me out too and I've got some leverage against it. And then I just slowly move it forward and move my thumb up. Now I'm getting to the center first, first middle ones. So stretch, stretch, stretch it out. Remove your pins. Grab the back of the fabric and all you're doing is just guiding. You're not pulling, you're just guiding it. same just moving our way down that looks like I do have to kind of adjust my at that seam I was a little far down but you can see that when you get there and you can just adjust it so that everything's nice and even okay. into the middle again now, when you get to this part, sometimes I just rearrange everything again and you're going down a whole nother way. So just take your time, stop and move everything. Remove pins. Don't try and remove pins. That's the quickest way to break a needle is when you forget to remove a pin. Home stretch. That looks like I close here, but not quite. Tack it a little bit at the end. And there we go. You got your other side done. So you now have two ruffled edges for the legs. <laughs> Leslie, I know. <laughs> I get real lazy and try and sew over them, but I'm trying not to teach you guys my lazy ways because that's why a lot of my pins have the dents in them and they're bent. I cannot lie. <laughs> so now we're going to do the same thing. You can go ahead and go over and iron. So you see how this is the ruffled edge. And we're going to do get ready to put in the snaps. And this is going to involve the stabilizer. So you're going to fold under on each side. Well, it's probably going to be, you know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch, somewhere around in there, and you're going to come back and stitch it. Well, I'm just going to stitch it, but you guys may want to iron it to make it easier. So we'll stitch this one. And when you get used to doing this, you don't have to stitch this either. You'll just catch it when you do the final seam. But for now, until you guys get used to it, I'm going to take you the extra steps. And I'm going to have a lot of little stuff to trim off here. Nice, Mary Beth. Wow. Where did you find those? I know, Amazon <laughs> answered everything. There. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Oh my goodness, all these little teeny tiny threads. Okay, so my other scissors walked off. I am so bad about that. I could have probably 30 pairs of scissors. 
and lose every single one of them in the course of making something and not be able to figure out where I laid them. Because I'll carry them with me like to this iron or something, lay them down and not even realize they were on my fingers. And oh, craziness. Oh, glass head pins. Yes, yes, yes. Those do not melt. You are so right. Yes, I agree, Mary Beth. Support your local stores as much as you can. Absolutely. I just figured Amazon would be the normal answer because everybody says that. <laughs> yes, sewing over your a, a pin can throw the timing off on your machine, so can hitting a pin. Now, I have not had, I've hit a many pins, and I've never thrown my timing out, so I'm just going to say I've been fortunate, but I know it can happen. So just telling you. All right, so now we're going to bring this up about an inch. So I'm going to go and measure, and then we're going to pin. And I'm betting that's about an inch. And here's a little trick for you guys. And I want everybody to go grab yourself a ruler sometime tonight or tomorrow and check. The distance from your first knuckle to your second knuckle is supposed to be an inch. So if you're sitting and you're wondering, is that an inch? Pretty close if it is. So just, just a little quick when you're trying to figure out how much do you need, that there's your little cheat area. And once you guys get used to sewing, you'll be able to gauge just visually if it's an inch. Because it's kind of a, it, you just know what it looks like. Yep. And those were, that was an inch each time. So. You, you've done the seams so many times when you do like the quarters and the eighths and the halves and the inches that you kind of can eyeball it. All right, so now we're going to stitch this from there to there. So I've done where I turned it and stitched, and then we turn an inch. And oop, one more time. Whoop, whoop. Add this thinking where it is later. Nope, it's going to be stitched close. Okay, so we've got it like this. We've got to put in our stabilizer now. So let me put in a third pin and show you guys. I'm going to just go ahead and it's going to go from right where you zigzagged the elastic to over to where you zigzag the elastic. So you kind of can measure it on the outside and cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But on mine that I cut, it's almost in half, not quite. And then when you measure that, just cut the next one the same length while you're cutting the first one. And you're going to be close because you're going to be able to trim it out after you've put it in, if it doesn't 100% cover. Oh, there's my other scissors. They were right there. So I'm going to take this and slide it in here. And we're creating the pocket to hold that. So I'm going to unpin, put it there, pin back over it. And... 
it's all munched up. So I've got to go in and flatten it out. And that's why that's three quarters of an inch is because this is an inch. So it sits in there really nice. And then when you get to this end, if it sticks out just a little bit, you can trim this, this part off after you've sewn it in. Or you can just kind of turn it in just a little bit. It doesn't really matter. Just so it doesn't show. So we're going to do that on both sides. And that's going to be in there because of the snaps. We just got to reinforce for the snaps. Oh, cool, Sandy. So it's not, <laughs> it's not so crazy. Oh, did you see the dog? Yeah, I did. I was like, how did you see her? Yeah, she is like, she's all that tonight. She was doing the old, um, I'm going to roll around on the couch a few minutes ago. She's so silly. So I'm just making sure that everything's laying flat on the back before I go back in and pin too, because I can't tell you how many times I do this and then I've got a crease on this side and didn't realize it and I stitched it and then I had to go and rip it out because there was a crease. So just take your time again, pin and flatten, pin and flatten, turn it over, make sure everything's laying nice and flat on this back side and you're not going to create a crease when you sew, okay? So now we're going to sew it shut. But again, that stabilizer is to reinforce for your snaps. And you can just kind of gauge along your seam there where you turned and you're stitched for just that hem part. I'm just going to pull that one because I'm hanging on to it. Now, I always make sure I sew off the fabric so that it, it secures your edges. If you stop like right here, so kind of like where, my, where I'm pointing, and don't go all the way. It can be real easy to catch that and pull as things wear. So you want to make sure you completely sew off the edge of the fabric when you are going back and forth to reinforce the starting and stopping. Okay. We are almost there, guys. We're almost done. And this one pin is the color of the fabric. Kind of hard to see it. I didn't realize that. <laughs> These brother machines are so silly. When you try and do something that it doesn't like, it comes up with a smiley face with a tear sorry doesn't work like that i'm just like oh that's so cute okay so now we've got the bottoms and you can see how it's reinforced now with that stabilizer so when we go put those snaps in it's not going to rip the fabric and i'm still snipping threads just when you think you got them all there's always one more all right now we're going to do the same thing up here. We're going to turn an inch and you're going to sew the casing for the tie. 
But let me show you the tie real quick, okay, and how we did that. Okay, so remember how I had you guys cut a two inch piece of this fabric to create the tie. This is the other part that it's gonna be a hand eye training at the iron, okay? So you're gonna do all that and then you're gonna go and you're going to iron this edge over. It doesn't really matter about that much on both sides. And then you're gonna have it laying this is where the hand-eye coordination comes in. And if you have your ironing board and you're laying it out like this, then you're going to take one side and fold it to the middle and the other side and fold it to the middle. And then the first little bit you start, it's going to, you know, obviously there's not a crease in it, so it keeps wanting to flop open. So I usually fold that, hold it, and then put the tip of my iron right there and then go and I get to where I can kind of work it. So you can actually leave the iron there for a second if you need both hands and flip them both and then move the iron and set it back down, flip them both, move the iron, set it back down and keep working your way down, okay? Eventually you'll get to where you can do it with one hand and you'll just kind of work it. Now, if you have a bias tape maker, you can use one of those as well. And that'll kind of do the same thing for you. And that sits on there. And as you pull it back, it folds it for you. And then you can move your iron forward. But make sure you iron it really good so you get a pretty good crease so it'll lay flat for you. Okay, so it'll look like that. And that's how we're going to make the tie. Now, what I'm going to do then is fold it in half. And you guys can fold it in half then and iron it again. Okay, I would recommend doing that. Because then what we're going to do is we're gonna stitch here back and forth. And you're gonna stop and drop your needle at that corner, turn it, and then we're gonna sew all along the edge all the way down till we get to the other end. And then you're gonna to get to another end like this and you're gonna turn it and then back and forth again. Okay, so we're gonna do that right now. Make sure I'm in the right stitch. And I always drop my needle on this one especially, and it doesn't have to be right on the edge. You know, I usually give it about an eighth of an inch and then go forward, take it real slow, and it'll take probably about four stitches and then back. And then you're gonna wanna stop about an eighth of an inch from the corner when you go to turn, okay? And now we're gonna go the long way. So that's how that looks, okay? And when you turn it, see how it kind of wants to undo? You can just kind of mess with it, and you're catching it closed, okay? And just keep those edges together. Sorry, that's my mom in me. <laughs> She would always just floor the foot feed on a, a sewing machine. And I try and not do that, but man, that's so ingrained into me. get to this end sometimes your ends don't match up real good just take your time and I'm going to put this back for a second 
because I need to show you how to do something. So if you get to where you've got a little edge sticking out there, what I do, and I, again, remember how I love these scissors? And they've got that real sharp point. So I'll take that point and I'll just tuck everything in. Even if it kind of creates just a little bit of bulk, it doesn't matter. It, you're going to sew over it, but I just tuck everything in so it's nice and neat, whether it be threads, maybe just a little tiny bit when you ironed it under and it's just kind of sticking out. It happens, you know, it'll happen. So I'll just take it and just kind of clean it up. And then that way, when I get to the end here, I can do my back and forth stitch. All right, so now you've got a tie. You just got to trim off the edge over here. And this will happen a lot. It's okay. You can see that thread right there. You can just trim that. It's fine. It's just the tail from um, one of your, from underneath from your bobbin. And you probably didn't get it pulled out. It always seems to happen to me on this one. Maybe my, my bobbin thread wasn't quite long enough. And I didn't get a hold of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Leslie. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you a little trick with this. I do this because um, I'm making the casing big enough that I can do this. Sometimes your casing isn't big enough, so you won't be able to do this, and you'll have to run it through. But I'm going to lay this edge here. Make sure your, sew it, your sewed part is to the down. You can have it to the up if you want, but it just looks more professional when it's down, okay? So you're here, and you can make your casing, and so it'll slide. See how it'll slide now? And I can pin that, because you can do about an inch, but if you want to do it this way too to make sure that it's big enough, and then you don't have to feed it through later either. It's already done. So then I lay it down, bring it out the other side, and just make it even. Now, as you notice, this is not going to, and I, I pin that that way, and it's wrong, because it's the way this is cut, it's not going to be able to match up like that. So what I need to do is just put a second pin in here, move it over just a little bit, and I've got to move that edge. Because when things are cut on a curve, they're not going to line up perfectly. They're going to come in just a little bit, okay? So it's really going to come in like that. Now, let me pin this, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So since that was on a curve, you see how this edge and this edge does not line up perfectly with those edges. So this edge... And this edge they're going to be just a little bit off okay and that's right because there's a curve there okay so there's the one and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that one closed and just be careful that you've got your tie all the way to the top so you don't catch it in the stitch or you'll have to rip everything out and redo it okay but you can then go right on top of that that first stitch when you hemmed it, if you did that, you can go ahead and just sew right across the top of that and use that as your guide. And if you're doing this without doing that, then you just kind of know visually that's where you're going to be. Okay. Back and front stitch. And make sure you go out past the edge on that one. Pull your pins as you're going. Okay. 
And especially on those ties, you want to make sure that you backstitch probably about three or four stitches to really give it a good, healthy reinforcement right there, because that's where some pulling and tugging could happen through normal wear and tear. So you just want to make sure it's good and secure. Now we're going to do this on the other side. Night, Sierra. Thank you for joining. Okay, so now you got to make sure you don't twist this when you do this. If you do, you can pull it out and put it back in. Just have to put a pin on a, a, a yeah, safety pin on the end and thread it through. But uh, just watch that you've got the seam down. And we're going to, again, flip this over. Remember, it's not going to go 100%. Now you can take this and match your distance. So I put my corner and I just kind of roll it up just to see if my if I'm doing the same. And if not, you can stop and just kind of adjust it. Pin. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to pull it through a little further. And you can usually eyeball it pretty good and then just measure it. Okay, you guys got to see this little goofball. Oh, now you're not going to do it right when I'm going to show them. And they're over there being a goofball. Okay, so let me measure that. Again, put the, the bottoms together and just kind of roll it up. Make sure you got the same measurement, and you do. So in the middle. And we're going to sew that one shut too. Just make sure your underneath also, your under fabric is not. Oh, yeah, you got the noisy toy. Great. <laughs> Amber, you're killing me. ends okay yeah we're gonna go back over we're done sewing so I'm gonna take you guys back over to the table and we'll look at where we're at and we're gonna put in the snaps so bear with me if this makes you sick we're moving you again amazing how many cords can be connected to a computer until I get to a certain point. So, all right. So this is where we're at now. Let's out of the way here. So this is what we just got done putting in. So you see how straight it is? And we did the two casings. And you've got the two open ends there, okay? And then you've got the little arm binding. So what we're going to do is you just pull that. 
And this you will eventually just kind of the ruche together when they put it together to wear it. And it'll just kind of go together, however. And then you just tie your little, your little bow. Okay. So almost done. So this is where we're at. We're going to put the snaps in on the bottom now. So there is not a front or back to this. So I, since I like my ties to be on my left, I am just going to make this the front, okay? Tie doesn't have to be on the left. Tie can be on the right. It doesn't matter. So this, I know, is going to be on the top, and this is going to be on the bottom because that's how I'm choosing to do that. So I'm going to get my snaps and my little attacher and the, the awl that makes the holes. So we're going to start and you're going to take the top one and put it over the bottom, line it up. Now, the way you're going to line it up is you see this stitched area here. The fold part of the top is going to lay against that stitched area. That's just kind of so you know how far to overlap it. Okay. And then you're going to grab about the middle. And this is just a little fiddly again. You can pin if you need to. So I'm going to grab it about the middle and hang on to it. And then I'm going to run my awl through that, through both pieces, okay? So just making sure I didn't move it too much. But like that. And then I'm going to put my awl through the middle one together. You want them together so that you get it in the same spot, okay? So I'm going to run this through. Be careful that you don't hit your fingers because this thing is so sharp. And then I just roll it all the way through. You have to go all the way through. All the way through. And then I just kind of make sure that it creates a good sized hole. And then I pull it out, and then I'm going to put in a top one and a bottom one. And then we've got the little applicator. Make sure you get the black part against the smooth and the white part against the other, or you will kill that one, and you'll have to pull it out and start all over. And then I usually squeeze in two spots. Now make sure you also pay attention when you put the bottom one in. You notice how this flat part went so that we can see it. The bottom one, the flat part's going to be where you don't see it. I made that mistake the first time, too. And I found that the bottom one I have to be really careful with. I've killed more of those with this, this tool because it wasn't 100% right in the center. And then it squished that part and totally broke it. Okay, so now you want to make sure you snap that one together before you apply the next ones. And remember how I always said I always snap them a few times and make sure that they're working too because they're a little tight at first. And that one actually didn't make a noise when it snapped, but it's fine. So you want that one together so that you can put the others in. And you know everything works out. So you're going to do the same thing. And we're doing three. So you just kind of gauge. And I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally poked myself. I am not kidding. It hurts. <laughs> Yes, front and back pattern look exactly the same. No, it's not mine, Wendy. It's in the um, it's in the notes. 
I downloaded it off of the internet. It's called SoCanDo.com. It's the Baby Bubble Romper. And it's a free pattern. Yeah, those are not making snapping noises. That's unusual. You're just hearing them snap. And I try and get these outer ones fairly close to the edge of the elastic area so that it holds that really nice and it doesn't let this edge of this ruffled area loose because that probably could irritate little legs if it sits and rubs. So the closer you can get to that elastic without getting right into the elastic, the better off you'll be. And they're perfectly lined up when you do them together through both sides of the fabric. Okay, guys, there we go. We got a little, a little romper. A little sunsuit. So, super easy. And I think you guys got a few skills to learn, which is good. I'm trying to keep you guys growing a little. Okay, let me move this up so we can, I can talk to you more now and you're not looking at my hands anymore. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I love these little sunsuits, they are so sweet. And they're just so comfortable and perfect. And then there's you. Ow, your little nails hurt so bad. Why do you do this when I'm on my lives? You decide to get silly. You get silly. <laughs> hey, Gabby. Oh, you're silly, girl. Oh, you're welcome, Wendy. That's my sister's name is Wendy. Now is not when we're going to play. Why do you decide to get all playful when I'm on a live, huh? Why? Silly girl. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Leslie. Yeah, the fur baby. Ow, ow, those, those really hurt, you know. <laughs> oh, thanks, Shana. Yeah, the... um. When you go to the website, now you'll see what I'm saying. It wasn't the best tutorial. So I was like, I looked at the pattern a few times and I'm like, oh, now I know what it's going to look like. Because I couldn't even really figure it out for a moment. And then when I started really looking at it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's easier than what she's looking at. Oh, crazy girl. You've got your, she's got this water bottle, these you know, you drink the water and then you scrunch the water bottle and put the cap back on so there's no air in it. She loves that thing. And then she'll destroy it and I'll take it away and throw it away. Man, they're noisy. <laughs> How you doing, Gabby? Oh, good, Mary. Yeah. These, these little uh, videos, that's what they're meant for, is for when you guys need to um, feel adventurous and you want to go back or all of a sudden you're like, hey, I remember, and then you can go back and do those. So, yeah, that's what these are all about. But I don't know. I think I know you guys can do this one. I know you can. And I want you to uh, really step out of your box and try this because I know you can do this. Now, if worse comes to worse and this elastic scares you down here, then instead of doing the ruffle like this, you can normally turn just a casing like we normally do and then feed your elastic through, okay? You can do that if you're scared to try this. But I'd really like you guys to try this, even if it's on just a regular piece of fabric first until you get the feel for it. 
because this is the cutest little edge when you get done. I mean, just look at that. It just creates such a cute little ruffled edge along the leg. And you can't get that when you turn a casing and then feed the elastic through, but you can do that. So if you wanna do that instead, feel free to go ahead and change the pattern up a little bit and make it easier for you. So you would turn the casing like you did for this tie, only it would be for the elastic. And then I would probably still use the quarter inch elastic and turn a half inch down on the casing, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, the elastic will be the trickiest part. And I'm trying to push you guys out of the box just a little bit on that, but you, there is a workaround, okay? Hey, Mary, I know you can do it. Yep, if you made a dress, you can do it. You absolutely can do it. Oh, it's okay, Shirley. Thanks for being here with us. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, and all of this stuff you guys can try just on a plain piece of fabric, you know, until you get comfortable with it and then go into this on doing it on the leg. If you're scared to try it straight out of the box, that's what I would do. Just get yourself and try it. You can cut like a, a curve like this. You can take the pattern, cut the curve on the piece of fabric that you're going to do, turn the edge, and then try it on scrap piece of fabric. Oh, good, Eve Mar. Oh, thank you, Corinne. I appreciate that. There's something about cherry fabric and gingham together. I don't know what it is. It is like the cutest, sweetest little thing for a little girl. Um, Gabby, you didn't see the sample. So there's the sample with the pink. And those that you, of you that came in late, there's the sample with the pink. And then this is the one we made tonight. I always create the sample because I want to test the pattern before I take you guys through it in case there's things that I think can be done a little easier than what the pattern says. Yeah, Bear Bear, you can't wear these. <laughs> Oh, you are, Leslie. Okay. So did they put the elastic on like this one, Leslie? Is that what you're saying? That you're having a little problem with it? Because I know the hardest part is, is getting the tension and then getting your sewing machine to go through it because sometimes your sewing machine when you first get started is where you've got the hardest part is getting it started. So you've got to really get it started at the beginning. Oh, thanks, Anna. Thanks, Mary Beth. So yeah. Um, any questions, anybody? Because there was two things I taught you tonight that were new. So it was learning how to make this tie. Possibly the casing. I mean, that was simple. That was really simple. And then the elastic. Those are the two new things tonight. Okay, Leslie. Yeah. And so practice. That's really all I can tell you. Practice, practice. It, it's tricky until you've done it enough to realize how your sewing machine works too, because every sewing machine on that beginning part is a little different. Mine feeds really well. Some don't feed as well as mine do on the underneath. They don't grab it. And I've got like my Janome won't feed that well and my fap won't feed that, that nicely. So I really have to get the tail ends of the thread, both tail ends and make sure that they are out long. I make a long tail. And then I've got to get far enough to get that free edge of the fabric out from underneath that foot feed so that when I pull, it's already out. And then when I pull on the thread, I'm not snapping the thread because you've got to get it so it feeds, just starts feeding and then it goes fine. But you've got to make sure everything's grabbing and that's where that little tug with the thread matters. Yes, Bear Bear is trying to claim this. He hasn't had any attention in like, oh, let's see, two hours. Yeah, he's getting he's getting a little needy. <laughs> he 
young lady boys sometimes, aren't you? Walking foot might make it easier. Yes. Um, you can try that, Leslie. Some of the uh, machines, if you're having a hard time with it grabbing, yes, try a walking foot and see if that doesn't help you out, plus the tugging. And once you get going, you're fine. You've just got to get just a little bit of it going so that everything's grabbing, and then you're good. Oh, are you going to calm down now? I'm afraid she's going to hype up again. <laughs> she's so silly. But these little sunsuits, I love making these. They are just so fun. And you know what, you guys? You can make real cute ones. You can get an old button-down shirt. Say you go to the thrift store or you've got one in your um, in your closet. And you, you can cut it out so that the buttons go down the front. And, oh, it is so cute. You can use old T-shirts. And as long as you've got enough to get you know, a front and a back. So a big t-shirt or maybe one t-shirt on the front, one t-shirt on the back. I mean, you guys can have a lot of fun with these. Just really get creative with what you're making them out of. Teddy bear. Yeah, this is, this is, this is honey bear or bear bear or Mr. HB. Yes. Yes, you are. So everybody have a good weekend. I just don't want to go back to work tomorrow. Even though I took Thursday, Friday off, I feel like I'm just, ugh, it's the next three days. They go fast because I have my um, my travel on Tuesday, Wednesday this week again, as you know, um, to Dallas. And maybe if Cindy's boy doesn't have soccer and everything works out, We'll be doing a live Tuesday night because when I'm up in Dallas, then I'm really close to her. I mean, I'm like 20 minutes from her. So we'll get together on Tuesday nights. Leslie joined us last time and we had so much fun. Last week, uh, soccer started. So things are starting to go back to normal, which that's great. But, oh, things are going back to normal. So now our Tuesday nights are a little iffy again. But, yeah, there's so much fun. She spoils us. Cindy spoils us so much. Oh, bummer, Leslie. Okay. Well, I don't know if Cindy is able to do it this week or not. Um, I haven't spoken to her. It's very possible they can have another soccer game. I don't know. So, I know. This is Holy Week, guys. Next Sunday is Easter. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and then it's going to be fall. It seems like from Easter to fall, it just goes boom, so quick. Oh, you're silly. He's so funny. He um <laughs> he'll see something and he'll look at it and then he's just like bam and he just moves so quick and he just boom and he's gone. <laughs> and like any other time he's just kind of like Mr. Chill, doesn't do much, and then bam. <laughs> you are so funny and so cute. You are so cute. I can't believe. He was, somebody just kind of threw him away, threw him outside. And it was over at my uh, office. And the girls took him under their wing. And we were trying to find him a place to uh, have a permanent home. And I said I would foster him for a while until we found him someplace. Because I don't like just taking a cat in and then sending them off somewhere. Because you really kind of need to assess, do they need any medical things taken care of first? You know, you just want them to have a successful next step. So I'm like, I'm going to foster him. Let's, you know, observe his temperament, find out if he has any little things we got to work through, if he's got any little health issues that he needs to go to the vet and get over first. He's staying here. He's precious. He is one of the chillest cats I've ever had in my entire life. I just, yeah, you are so awesome. I just cannot believe somebody let you go. So... Oh, well, happy birthday, Leslie. Oh, you have a perfect reason for not showing up on Tuesday. Awesome. That's so wonderful. Yes, and then make, make a matching headband or scrunchie to go with them. Absolutely. Yep. 
Yep, because you can make headbands out of woven fabric as well. You just need to, you do it a little bit different. I might show you guys one of these times that might be one of those. Um, either I'm going to try and start doing some vids to put up throughout. It's not going to be something that can happen every week. It's just when I have a few moments or things slow down a little bit. Now that my taxes are done, that's huge. And I filed those yesterday. So, whew. I can relax now for the rest of the year. Huh? No, I need to, I need to do what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm going to do every year and don't do, which is like, make sure all of my stuff gets entered into some sheet. And that way I don't have to go through this every year of spending forever searching everything down and adding it all up. But um, you can do the headbands like you do with the um, knit, but you've got to add a little bit of an elastic into them because obviously this doesn't stretch and so you have to you can cut them out the way that you do and then you'll put a piece of elastic about probably an inch inch and a half two inches however long and you're going to secure it on each end and then pull it together through the casing so that it can do this and then you can put the bow over it or you can put it in the back and put the bow there or the tie or whatever just got to make sure that it it stretches and then that's how you do the ones out of cotton if you want to match your cotton. Did I ever turn this back on? I had turned it off earlier. Okay, we're good. Yeah, scrunchies are easy, Mary. I made one probably about two or three weeks ago just I, I've had this fabric forever that I wanted to scrunchie out of for years. And I've never made myself make one. And then we got on the scrunchie bandwagon and I actually needed one desperately for my hair. And I kept remembering that fabric because I it was just enough to make a scrunchie and I kept saving it. And so I, I finally went and just made one for me. And I was like, oh, I'm glad I made that. And that, that was kind of like just constantly... You know how you have that itch of something you want to do, and it's been sitting there for years, and I'm like, I'm going to lose that piece of fabric. I've just got to go and do that. I'll probably wear that thing for till I'm 95, and then they're going to go be putting it in my hair still when I'm 95, and I'll be like, that's that scrunchy. <laughs> but yeah, they would be super cute. Bows, anything. Big old bow. Because the, the woven actually will make the bows kind of stiffer and stand up so they're so cute when you do them like that hey buddy what do you think hmm? what do you got to say oh you can't make biscuits on that it's not gonna go through he's trying to make biscuits on the mat <laughs> he loves it when i talk to him it just makes him go into instant biscuit Oh, yes, Anna. Yeah, Mary, they are. Ask Char. Char, are you still on? Her little kids, you have got to go over to Char's channel. Her little kids are making a killing with scrunchies. They got sewing machines gifted to them. And they are, they're doing little YouTube videos. And Char's posting on Instagram um, when they're ready, when they, um, when they uh, release and oh my gosh, they're doing so good. You guys, it's so cute. Her, she has two girls and two boys and her youngest boy is like little, little, little and he gets into it too. It is so cute. So Char is La Belle Petite, if she's not on. So you can scroll up through the messages. Um, she was on earlier, and it'll be up there. And go to her YouTube channel and to her Instagram. They are so, I know, Mary, they're so stinking cute. And they're probably, I'm guessing the youngest one's probably two, maybe? And the oldest one's probably about eight, somewhere around in there. So they're from that age range, eight to 10. 
Oh my gosh, they're so, oh, I'm so proud of her for doing that with them. Hey, you're just going to town on that thing back there. And at least you're not over here tearing me up with your nails. Oh, I don't know what, what drives her. It's just like all of a sudden she's like, oh, I'm going to play with you now. And I'm like, I didn't do anything to get you going. <laughs> Why now? <laughs> Buddy, you can't wear these. These are for girls. You're a boy. You're a boy. You don't wear these. You don't wear these. Kitties don't wear these, okay? <laughs> no, Bob. You'd look kind of silly in that as a cat. Yes, you would. <laughs> yes, Mary, that would be good. That's exactly what she's doing. Is she's teaching them how to sew. And they're doing like their own videos. And so they're doing their own promo videos and everything. It is so cute. And she's got the camera. And she's kind of coaching them just a little bit on the backside. But oh my gosh, I love it. This, what, are you making a cameo appearance? You normally don't show up on the camera. You normally don't sit here, period. This is not usual. I know. I was down here. Wasn't down here the last two days that much with you. You're getting needy, aren't you? Because you're used to me being down here. I'm down here during the week for work. It's just so light-filled down here. I love being down here. So I've got my computer and my monitor and everything for my day job sitting over there. And so he's used to having me down here with him all day and he'll hang out on the, the couch and make biscuits or he'll sit up real high on top of my bookshelves over there and watch me. But when I don't, uh, when I don't hang with him a whole lot, like when I'm gone those Tuesday, Wednesdays, man, he's so needy. When I get, get back, he just wants me to hold him and talk to him. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. You guys have got to go see it. It is just precious. Hi, sweet boy. Yeah, you're making biscuits. So I want to see, I want to see you guys make these. I want to see you, sh you take a shot at them. Give them a good try. If you have to rip out a few things, I'm pushing you just a little bit on these, I know. And uh, you can do it. I know you can do it. Yes, Wendy, we are going to, uh, we're going to have little boy things coming up too. Um, Amber's got some boy shorts coming up. Um, she's also going to do a tank, which is going to be a unisex. And then I'm going to do boys swim shorts and that'll be in May. So we've made, um, we've made the plans for the next two months. Um, also April 5th, which is the day after Easter is Amber's birthday, Amber's birthday. And she's not sure she's going to do her so long because that's when the so long fell for her. So she's not sure she's going to do the so along that Monday. It just really depends. But I, we kind of just assume she probably won't. So she's moving it to the following Monday. So up until after next week, she's the opposite Monday of me. And then it's going to it kind of fell that it would be mine. And then she would be the next night. So then we're going to just kind of keep it like that uh, until further notice. And then when Gabby comes back, we'll get Gabby to pick up that off week and have her do hers on that one. So yeah, you gotta be friends with your seam ripper. You absolutely so true, Mary. And you gotta probably have about three or four of them because one is always lost. If it's like, it's like my scissors, I'll carry it with me and not even realize and I'll lay it down. So I've got to have several of them. So yeah, you will totally get to know your seam ripper, get to appreciate ripping seams because that's how you're going to learn is if you force yourself to redo what you didn't do right. And you will, and I'm going to show you something I noticed. 
and I just kind of blew it off. I'm going to go fix it. Okay. But it happens to all of us. Okay. So when I was sewing, when I was sewing the underarm part here, remember I keep telling you to catch the bottom, make sure it's flat. See how I got a little, it caught it. So all I got to do is go and I'm going to go and rip this out right there because that's the part that turned over. And then I've got to rip out where I sewed it on because it's when I sewed it on and it's right at that seam. And that's very common that that'll happen there too. So I just got to go and take it out and fix it. But I will do that as otherwise if I leave it, it's kind of like it's got a pleat right there. And it may or may not show, but when I go to iron it, it's really going to show. So I'm going to pull that out. If nothing else, I know it's there and it's not supposed to be there. So it's got to come out. Yeah, Mary, I quilt too. So yeah, that seam ripper. <laughs> I've got three. I need to pick up probably two more. And I usually have like our sewing machines will have like these little trays. And I've usually got one in each one of the trays that I can use a tray on. My uh, brother, the tray is kind of with that embroidery attachment on. I can't get to the tray, so I can't have one there. But uh, yeah, I've usually, I've got a shelf right there. I can put them on and I still, they walk away. I just, uh, Yeah, very true, Leslie. It's not my kind of perfect height. Yes, that's me. So funny. You always want me on top of you, and then the minute I, I get really up close and personal, you give me that look as a, hey, yo, back up a little. But yet, stay right here, but back up. <laughs> not sure how old he is. I think he's older. There's days I think he's an old man. And other days, I'm not sure. Yeah, I called you an old man. Yeah, I did. Because he's missing some teeth, and I don't know why he came to me that way, but he's missing, like, his front four, his little teeny ones, these four. I don't know how he eats because, he, you know, they always pick up with their small teeth, and I don't know how he gets it, but he, he's put a lot of weight on, so he's figured it out. But, yeah, I, I swear you're an old man. I need to take you and find out, but... Even the vets, you know, they, they kind of, they give you an age, but I still don't think that they're quite where they need to be high. So I'll never know, will I? Yeah, and I don't need that end, and neither do they. <laughs> so, yeah, now you guys have kind of seen a little bit of the other side of the studio. So when I tell you it's crazy over there. Now, this side over here, I haven't shown you that. That's still kind of crazy too. But, uh, but yeah, um, I still got to figure out this angle. We're getting closer. I think um, if I can get you up just a little higher so that you're looking more down, I think is what I've really got to do. My ring light only goes so high, and I've got you as high up as I can, and i got the camera right in the middle of it on the highest spot, which is working really well to some degree. But I'm really glad I'm not super tall. All right, guys. It's 9.10, so I hope you enjoyed this live. I really love hanging out with you on Sunday nights. Really just kind of helps me wind down and it's kind of a, a good little time to just sit and chat with you guys and enjoy the last little bit of my weekend and do what I love, sewing and embroidering and talking to you guys. So um, I'm going to try and start the Zooms here next weekend. I know it's Easter weekend, but I think... Um, I think I'm going to try and shoot for either Friday or Saturday, probably Saturday. 
And we will do a few Zooms throughout the next month and kind of try and land on one or two times that'll that'll work out and maybe try and do them two, three times a month. And you never know, I might just do some impromptu ones if I'm working and just kind of want to get on and chat with people and I'll throw it out there in Discord and stuff. But um, I will put that up in Discord. Um, and if you guys aren't on Discord, I know I have one person on Instagram. I'm going to message um, Edie. I don't know if you figured out how to get on Discord, but um, if you didn't, let me know. Message me on Instagram or whatever, and I'll give you the information as well. Um, not going to post it on YouTube for obvious reasons. So anyway, um, anyway, you guys have a wonderful uh, beginning of your week, and um, I'll probably be talking to you on Zoom. There will be no live next Saturday because it's Easter, so I'm not going to do a live next Saturday or next Sunday night. Okay. So I'm going to catch you guys, hopefully in a video, maybe I'll catch a live uh, impromptu live yet at the end of the week. So I will see you guys later and you have a good, good rest of your evening. Okay. Thanks for joining me. Bye.